Matthew 19. We'll dig into this a little bit more. Because divorce and remarriage are two separate issues, right? First, you just got the divorce of, of ending a marriage, splitting that up. But then after that divorce, well, what about getting remarried? What about finding some, what if someone else comes into my life and I really like this person and I'd like to marry this person? Well, is it right to commit adultery? And that's a pretty easy one, right? And that's what Jesus, now, now do people do this? Sure they do. They do a lot. Is that what they're supposed to do? No. No. And, and going to my sermon this morning, are there plenty of women that wear jeans and pants? Sure there are. Is it what they're supposed to do? No. Right? People do things they're not supposed to do, but, and I don't want to try to make light of it either because Jesus is definitely not making light of it. If he's saying, like, you're committing adultery by doing this, you know, <laughs> adultery carried a death sentence, it's a pretty, pretty bad sin. I mean, it's not just something that's like, oops, sorry, I just committed adultery. So you, you really need to be aware of this. And, and for those of you who haven't been divorced and maybe you've thought about divorce, or maybe in the future you might think about getting divorced, you know, first of all, just realize you're not going to just be able to go out righteously and then just get remarried. Like, if you already just sinned by getting a divorce that's not righteous, you'd be adding sin on top of that again by then getting married to somebody else. So, like, if you're thinking, well, I'm kind of sick of my wife or I'm kind of sick of my husband, I just want to find somebody else, that, I mean, you'd be sinning twice. Like, major, like, big, big deal here. This isn't just a little, a little thing. Matthew chapter 19, look at verse number 3. I, I already read this, uh, this first verse here, verse 3. We'll read it again. The Pharisees also came unto him, tempting him, and saying unto him, Is it lawful for a man to put away his wife for every cause? And he answered and said unto them, Have ye not read? And I love that answer too. Amen. Like he, People come to him asking him stupid questions. Haven't you read? You know, it is a can I just do it for every cause? That is a stupid question. Because the law doesn't say you could just get divorced for every cause. Like I said, we'll, we'll get to that in a minute. We'll, we'll, go, we'll, we'll end up looking at that. Verse 4, have you not read that he which made them at the beginning made them male and female? And he said, and said, for this cause shall a man leave father and mother and shall cleave to his wife, and they twain shall be one flesh. Wherefore, they are no more twain but one flesh. But therefore, God joined together. Let not man put asunder. Same story, essentially, as what we saw in Mark 10. But let's keep reading because there's, there's a little bit more uh, added at the end of this one. They say unto him, why, then, why, why did Moses then command to give a writing of divorcement and to put her away. He saith unto them, because, Moses, because of the hardness of your heart, suffered you to put away your wives, but from the beginning it was not so. And I say unto you, whosoever shall put away his wife, except it be for fornication, and shall marry another, committeth adultery. And whoso marrieth her which is put away, doth commit adultery. So in, in this verse here, we see the one, the one caveat, the one issue, the one thing that says, okay, well, if you divorce your wife for any other reason except for fornication and marry another committing adultery. So this would be the law part that is accepting of that divorce, which would then allow you to get remarried because it was done lawfully according to the law of God. So just keep that in mind that it says fornication there. Now, fornication and adultery are the same physical act. Same physical act that happens. But fornication is usually what's referred to when it's, people are not married. Because once you're married, that becomes adultery. Adultery carries the death sentence. Fornication does not, typically. Okay? When people commit fornication, you know, if, if, a, if a man and woman commit fornication and it's found out, then the man's supposed to marry that woman. Okay? But, it's, but it's, that's not a capital punishment or anything like that. If you, if you didn't like the guy very much, you might think it's worse than a capital crime, but, you know, hey, you're the one that's doing it. <laughs> 